up this weekend on incredibly short notice. Thanks so much for joining in with Fight Night Picks. We told you in the full card video for Cater versus Allen that there would be some additions, so we thought... And originally we had Christian Rodriguez taking on Garrett Armfield at 135 pounds. And now all of a sudden uh, we're hoping that he can take his life and hold it by the hand and he can greet the world with arms wide open. We have wide open Joshua Weems. Do you think he's a Creed fan like me? I just think his nickname describes his striking defense, but maybe I'm off on this one. It's also wide open. Ooh, Matt, we have an interesting fight now all of a sudden because I was really excited for Christian Rodriguez, Garrett Arnfield. I made the graphic. I wrote the notes. I was ready. And then in the 11th hour on Sunday before we taped, it seemed like the wheels were falling apart. Nobody said the fight was off, but it was on Topology, and then it was gone. It was on UFC stats and fight metric, and then all of a sudden, right before we taped, it was gone. So I just figured, well, we'll skip by this one and see what happens. And lo and behold, Armfield out, Rodriguez now taking on Weems. And if you don't know Joshua Weems, and a lot of people on Twitter didn't, boy, did they not. Man, I had a lot of fun doing the tape study getting ready for this one, because for Christian Rodriguez... You kind of know what you're going to get. I mean, he was one of the more exciting fighters coming into the UFC, had the Rufus Sport connection. And it's funny to say like a 24-year-old's a lifer at a gym, but he grew up and was a lifer at the gym at Rufus Sport. He was with the Pettis brothers. He was with Ralphion Stotts. He was with all of those guys in the lower weight classes. You were excited about his striking, his grappling, everything that he could offer in MMA. And even going back and watching his short notice UFC debut against uh, Jonathan Pierce, there's a point where Dominic Cruz says, and I quote, in the first round, and I'm not joking, it's about over, ladies and gentlemen, when he has a guillotine in on Pierce. They were talking about how they could hear the gurgling. Now, ultimately, short notice, up weight class, take on a really good grappler in Jonathan Pierce. No shame in Pierce losing that fight. Pierce's look great in that fight. Exactly. And I thought Rodriguez looked really good in the first round. A couple of judges, 30-27, 29-28. But regardless, for Christian Rodriguez, picking up the pieces, getting ready for Armfield, you know you're going to get some decent boxing, some wonky uppercut to left hook action, because that's what Garrett Armfield's combo is. They'll throw one before the other, but it'll mix it up to really keep you thinking. And Armfield is really good at offensive wrestling. Now Rodriguez is getting ready for Joshua Weems, and Weems likewise for Rodriguez. Joshua Weems will take your neck home or your arm home, but he doesn't really offensively grapple. He waits for his opponents to make mistakes and take him down to the mat. And that is the weird thing about Joshua Weems. Normally we talk about people who are primary wrestlers, and then they use their wrestling almost like a defensive mechanism. The best example of this, of course, is Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell was a really good wrestler, but nobody remembers Chuck Liddell shooting for double legs like he's Chael Sonnen. He would use his wrestling more in a defensive manner, and you're right, for Joshua Weems, he does seem very hand-happy to go out there and try to slug it out and really go for brawls, which does make him an exciting fighter that does have to be said like I don't care if Josh Weaves wins 10 fights in a row or loses 10 fights in a row in the UFC he is always going to be that exciting fighter and just before we started filming like I told Craig did he not have the most exciting three round contender series fight and you've ever seen three I minute, know he lost three minute, three minute exactly series. thank you I know he lost that fight but he lands a bunch of clean right hands he looks really good on the feet shows really good movement in spots where he has to move but the thing is and like I had said at the opening of the video is wide open does kind of describe his striking defense and he's one of these fighters who he doesn't have reactive defense it's sort of stationary if you hit his hands you hit his hands if you can get around that guard you can get around that guard and for Weems he does like to sit back and try to counter with his own heavier shots and yes if they land it is really good you talked about his grappling he can definitely take advantage of a hurt opponent if he does have them hurt on the feet and uh cinch up a lot of those nice submissions on the mat I will be interested though do you think Rodriguez is going to use some of his wrestling in this matchup and this is why we did see a little bit of it against Pierce I yep. will be fair I know he got taken down a lot of times. It felt like Jonathan Pierce did not miss when he went for a takedown attempt, but Rodriguez, I think, did show off in moments, like you had said in the first round especially, that he is not some scrub when it comes to the grappling. He does have good defensive grappling. He has good offensive grappling, too. I just think for Rodriguez, this is a much better reset for him to kind of restart his well, UFC career, it's, if you will. It's really awkward, and there's a lot of parallels you can draw from both of these Dana White's Contender Series vets, because for Christian Rodriguez, he came on the show Miss Weight came in, what was it, 130 136, 137, actually for that fight on Contender Series. 
Dana thought that he looked really good. Maybe need a little bit more seasoning out there. So he goes out and he fights uh, Ryan McIntosh, who was 19-36 and 36 on it's a promotion that break. you can't really find the fight. So then he comes in, takes on Jonathan Pierce up at 145. But a big note that I had getting ready for the Garrett Armfield fight is the fact that Rodriguez fought all different weight classes. He has three fights at 135, albeit one of them he missed the weight. He's got two fights at catch weight of 140 pounds. He's got one, uh, two at 145 and he's got one at 150 and for Joshua Weems also missed weight on Dana White's contender series and yeah, listen he came in at 139 and normally I'm really hard on guys missing weight but he came in on really short notice uh replacing uh Paul Capaldo taking on Fernie Garcia Fernie Garcia won that fight but he wasn't winning the fight up until he landed the overhand right that knocked down Joshua Weems. Weems was winning the fight. Like, Weems looked really good. His leg kicks were great. And that's a big thing. Not just the Garcia fight, but all of Joshua Weems' fights. I touched on this yesterday talking about the Carlos Moda fight where he's taking on Cody Durden. Joshua Weems is a guy that will kick to all three levels. And I absolutely love it. He places body kicks in the, the, the solar plexus, the liver. It's always in the right spot. He's not hitting guys in the nuts no, very right. often. And again, the one thing I don't like is your game plan relies on your opponents to make mistakes. And that was one of the things like in his fight against Jewel Scott, who was 36, Jewel gets, you know, the takedown in the second round and ends up getting caught in the submission. But the trouble is, Jewel won round one, Jewel was winning round two, and he didn't get caught in his first takedown in the first round, but he did get caught in the second round. And that's where Weems can get a lot of these submission wins against not the higher level guys, but it's actually funny because Weems fought a really good level of competition. Where's Rodriguez? And yeah. after after losing against Fernie Garcia, he goes out there with B2 Fighting Series, notably having Harry Hunsucker formerly on their roster. He wins their interim Bantamweight Championship against Thiago Bello, who looked like a good fighter. Like, Bello was actually winning that fight. I thought Bello won the first round. Second round, Bello goes to take him up against the fence, gets a takedown, and then he ends up getting submitted. And he went... Weems went from Kimura to threatening with his legs to then getting the armbar. And in the fight against Mo Miller, you guys know Mo Miller. He's a really good fighter. He lost on that looking for a fight Dana White's Contender Series Fury. In that fight, Mo won the first round, Mo won the second round. And then in the third round, Weems catches him in a in a guillotine right up against the cage, pulls it tight, and it's over. So it's kind of funny that way. Would you agree with me, though, for Christian Rodriguez, this is almost like his Benoit Saint-Denis going back down to 155 opportunity. He had a tough roll of the dice his first time out there. It was short notice against a talented opponent in a weight class that he might belong in, if we're being honest, in the long run. But for right now, he is competing at Bantamweight, so let's give him the luxury. Up a weight class where he normally competes at or where he will be competing. And I just think for Rodriguez, it's going to be interesting to see how he does fare at this weight class against Weems. Because, again, I do think that there is a good skill set there that he can improve on. He is only 24 years old. You talk about how long he's been at Rufus Sport and the good level of training well, partner that he has had throughout his career, which is really important because it's not like he's training with a gym that has a lot of good heavyweights. It is important when you have guys who are marquee names around the weight class in which you compete. That's where we got a zig and zag, Matt. Because Christian Rodriguez, whole career at Rufus Sport, lost that fight against John and the Pierce and where does he train now? Fight ready. Exactly. And that's the weird thing. For Rodriguez, I wonder if it is just... Uh, like the Deontay Wilder. Remember when he lost the first time and he just made every excuse in the book and it was, hey, I'm going to fire all my coaches, get a new training camp. And for him, I guess it kind of worked out so it's not the best of examples, but we do see this in combat sports. I guess uh, Amanda Nunes is another example where we both had different opinions on that. I thought that was going to be a very bad move for her to go on her own, kind of do her own thing. Hey, or going from American Top She team. got to train with Garrett Arnfield. She did get to train with Garrett Arnfield. One of the great training partners of all time but you know what i mean we do see these somewhat knee-jerk reactions and i will be curious to see if rodriguez will make this move and if it will make improvements to his career but i think this will be an exciting fight to add on very short notice but that's the thing that has to be said like i think there's a chance for this is kind of a sort of a sloppy fight let's be honest it's two guys getting ready for each other on very short notice it's gonna be difficult to make a game plan on four days and, notice and that's the other thing if we focus in on joshua weems listen we're gonna give you every ounce that we can but we threw it up there on the screen he's training at a glory on the main fitness four weeks ago he was there two weeks ago he was there but traditionally he trains at a killer bees jiu-jitsu and black sales mma and both these guys brazilian jiu-jitsu purple belts as recently as i could find weems obviously the threat of the submission is That's very great. very likely he also has boxing experience and bk B experience, bare knuckle boxing experience, fought at that game bread fights. And that's where it's weird because Topology has his record is 10 and 2. They count that one game bread fight as a, you know, a, I guess a bare knuckle fight. But if you go over to Sherdog, they count that as an MMA fight. I think that's, and it is, it's the same card as uh, 
Hamdi Abdel Wahab, where yeah. it was a it was a bare knuckle fight fought under MMA rules. So Weems wins it by split decision. We have it as eleven and two, but just keep that one in mind. Regardless, Weems sharpening the tools with his striking. His boxing's not terrible. His striking defense leaves a little bit to be desired. He's fast and loose with his kicks, but his leg kicks are a huge part of his game. Offensive takedown, not the best. Good cardio. I like that. He does, yeah. And his submission abilities are great. Christian Rodriguez, the one-two is very, very speedy. And there's a lot of pop at the end of those shots. And he, too, also has really nice kicks. And he likes to throw a high kick quite often as well. He does. And that's why I do favor him on the feet in this matchup. And that's the thing. I do expect this to primarily be contested on the feet. I think Weems is going to come with a bit of a grappling mindset. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for a few more takedowns than we have been used to in the past. I think on the feet, he might run into some trouble early. Might force a shot out of him. And then from that point, if he is able to secure a takedown, especially early on in this fight, Weems, I do expect, is the more... Not expect. He is the more uh, dangerous on the mat in terms of going out there trying to get a submission win. Gets really good at passing guard. Can get into half guard. Uh, really likes posturing up. Has some nice moves on the map. But the thing about Weems is I just think his striking defense is going to be trouble in this fight. I like the steadiness out of Rodriguez. But that has to be said. We saw him slow down against Pierce. But he was against a wrestling heavy attack against a much bigger guy. So that's why I said for Rodriguez, I think this is a great reset for him. I think this is a performance that can kind of get the bad taste left by the uh, Jonathan Pierce won out of our mouths, but I think it should be an entertaining one. We'll see how it goes for Rodriguez. He came in on six days notice to take on Mr. Jonathan Pierce for Weems coming in on the Tuesday. The fight is on the Saturday. No odds on this fight. It was just announced not that long ago. We're not going to be surprised. We're not going to throw it on to the topology voters because we threw it out there again. Instagram story at Fight Night Picks for this saying, one. Craig? And we've got 71% going with Rodriguez to get the win, 29% over Joshua Weems. So to flip it back, if you missed the video on Moda versus Durden, that was a short notice one that came out on Monday night, make sure you check that out. The full card, so on and so forth. But I do have this to say in this matchup. If this was on a full camp, like both guys had like four to six weeks to get ready for this matchup, I could see this one lined very, very closely, not even knowing what the odds are. I would assume Rodriguez would land between minus 150, minus 180, leaving Weems at like a plus 130, plus 150. Weems was a plus 300 underdog against Mo Miller, and he was able to get the win there. He was an underdog in his fight against Fernie Garcia, and I saw a lot of people going back and just digging around, sleuthing on social media that had Weems to beat Garcia before the fight. So a lot of smart people really like like Joshua Weems that goes to show how good of a fighter he is and how much he deserves this shot so for me I do like Christian Rodriguez with the striking getting ready for a guy like Garrett Armfield in this matchup not that Weems is a, a lot like Armfield but there are some parallels you can draw from a little bit of the striking a little bit of the grappling as well I think if Rodriguez I know he's got good offensive takedowns he struggled defensively against Pierce and on the fight on Dana White's contender series but by and large, Christian Rodriguez has high school wrestling background and his takedown defense has been throughout his career actually a strong point. So I do like Rodriguez here, but treat the mat like it's lava and don't get close to it. Exactly. No, I agree with a lot of what you said. I think this should be an entertaining scrap. I do favor Christian Rodriguez though for his steadiness. I think we are going to see a better version of him at 135. I'll be curious to see what both guys look like on the scale though because like you had mentioned, both guys have had trouble at 135 in the past. So maybe we will get a, a depleted looking Rodriguez and a really fresh looking Weems or Bryce versus so the opinion might change by the time we do get around to the fights on saturday but for right now i favor rodriguez fight night picks welcome to this place i'll show you everything well wide open get the win or will it be mr c rod christian rodriguez both of us going with now fight ready zone Christian Rodriguez to get the win. Make sure you comment down below. It was a lot of fun going back and watching the tape study, getting ready for this one. On short notice, we have Cater versus Allen in the main event. Question mark kicks. You're really going to need to pay attention oh, yeah. to that, especially with the weigh-ins with all these short notice fights. So keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. As we always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.